Alright guys, you all knew this was coming eventually. The Beetlejuice 54A is the reward for completing the master level of the light machine gun directive for the Varnu Sovereignty, and it's never been a weapon to escape its fair share of controversy. So, g'day there once again viewers, this is your mate Kamikaze78 here, and today guys, we're going to be putting the Beetlejuice 54A under our magnifying glass for a review, and then have a chat about its place in the game currently from a balanced perspective. Okay, so for those of you who are new to the channel, this is how we like to run things around here in regards to these weapon reviews. We're going to kickstart things off here with a quick TLDR overview of the weapon, basically a condensed version of this review, mainly for those who don't have the time to sit through a 15 minute long review for a weapon in a video game. Trust me, I get it, some of you have got better things to do with your day. But for those of you who are more interested in the nitty and the gritty, we'll then jump into some stats and then follow up with some weapon specific strategy for best using the Beetlejuice in combat. Now normally we'd wrap things up by going over attachment options and which ones are going to best work for the weapon and what makes the best build, yada yada yada. But in this certain situation, this is a directive weapon, and therefore attachment options are kind of a thing of the past. So instead, we're going to briefly talk about whether or not the weapon is actually, you know, worth the grind to unlock or not. And then we're going to answer the age-old question, is the gun currently balanced in the game right now? I can hear the pitchforks being hurled my way with that remark, so let's get into things with a quick TLDR of the Beetlejuice. Alright, the good old Beetlejuice 54A, without a doubt one of the most controversial weapons to have ever faced the Planetside 2 community. It's an LMG that takes the already very popular Orion platform and grants it the ever elusive heat mechanic, giving it effectively unlimited ammunition and under the correct management, the ability to avoid reloading entirely while you're using it. Now, besides the heat mechanic, the weapon sports practically identical stats to the Orion, which basically gives it the exact same role in combat. A well-regarded barrel-stuffing CQC oriented LMG that under the correct recoil management can even extend its effective range out to medium distances. The Orion platform has always been considered a popular LMG among Vanu operatives and its performance has always lived up to its reputation. That reputation has very much carried across to the Beetlejuice without question, and the Beetlejuice's ability to dissipate heat even while it's out of the user's hands gives it some amazing uptime that's unrivaled in the hands of skilled operatives who can make use of their entire kit at the right times. And in case that doesn't answer the question, yes, the Beetlejuice is 100% worth unlocking even though you got to go through five Araxiums on other Vanu Sovereignty LMGs. I mean, there's a reason why it's one of the most used LMGs across the entire game, and that use time even eclipses that of the other two factions' directive LMGs combined. Which lines us up very nicely to go even one step further in this video and ask the question, is the weapon actually overpowered? I mean, with use time stats like that, it begs the question. That's something we're going to have to tackle later in the video after we give the weapon a bit more of an in-depth analysis, because trust me, I've heard arguments supporting both fronts regarding this weapon. So we've got an interesting discussion to have here later in the video. Anyway, it's a ton of fun and an excellent addition to the armory in its current state. Dare I even say a direct replacement to the Orion once it's owned. But let's get into the stats and have a look as to why that's the case. Starting off with the damage, the Beetlejuice 54A sports a run-of-the-mill 143 maximum damage at the 10 meter mark, dropping off to a minimum damage of 112 at the 65 meter mark. So we do drop a total of two damage tiers here, needing seven shots to kill at the 10 meter mark, eight shots to kill between the 10 and 41 meter mark, and nine shots to score that kill anywhere after 41 meters before we reach the minimum damage range. As we said before, run-of-the-mill. But when you add the 750 rounds per minute, or 12.5 rounds per second fire rate, we find ourselves with an incredibly theoretical time to kill of 0.48 seconds at the 10 meter mark, 0.56 seconds at the 41 meter mark, and 0.64 seconds at the 65 meter mark, assuming that all rounds hit the chest area and bullet travel time is instantaneous. These numbers are certainly on the quicker side of things and really help to give the LMG its reputation for being a true force in those close quarters engagement ranges. The damage over range does demand a couple of extra shots to knock out a target, which means against a weapon that excels in those said ranges, you're going to have a hard time, even with excellent recoil control. 
which nicely segues us onto the handling for the good old Beetlejuice. Overall, the weapon kicks with some consistent yet slightly hefty vertical recoil, especially when considered alongside the fast rate of fire, with some horizontal shake that while is noticeable, is pretty easy to keep under wraps after some practice. For those more interested in the hard numbers, we're looking at a 0.4 degree vertical recoil kick per shot with a complementary 2.25 times first shot multiplier, which places the recoil at 0.9 degrees every Every time you initiate a burst with the weapon. In other words, the Beetlejuice is built less so for tap 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 and more for just outright burrt. Anyway, horizontally we are looking at a horizontal recoil kick of 0.22 degree per shot with a governing 0.8 degree horizontal tolerance. Believe it or not, the Beetlejuice and Orion respectively both have the most quote-unquote intense horizontal recoil kick per shot out of all the Vanu Sovereignty LMGs, even if it is only slightly stronger by its second place counterparts. But that governing horizontal tolerance means that the weapon can only kick twice in the same direction before being forced back towards the center point, which means that you can still keep things pretty controlled under long bursts, all things considered. We also have no recoil angle at play here either, which is a nice added bonus too. From a cone of fire perspective, we are looking at the better end of the stick for ADS bloom per shot values for Vanu Sovereignty LMGs, and a slightly nicer hip fire by comparison as well. But there is no denying that the weapon is at its strongest when you are aiming down sights with it, so keep that in mind. As we get to the ammo side of the weapon, this is where we find the Beetlejuice's little party trick, the heat mechanic. The heat aspect of the weapon gives it an effective magazine size of 50 rounds fired in one burst before overheating. If you overheat the weapon, you'll be dealt with a 3.28 second cooldown penalty that you'll have to endure before the weapon starts cooling down over time. If the operator stops firing the weapon before overheating it, there's a small 0.5 second delay before the weapon starts dissipating built up heat, and that heat dissipates at a rate of 12.5 shots every second. So doing the math, if you manage to fire 49 rounds, then you're effectively looking at a 4.5 second long reload if you don't overheat the weapon to get the weapon back down to its base heat. For 25 rounds, you're looking at 2.58 second effective reload. You get the idea. Now, out of the gate, that may seem a little bit on the longer side, but you have to keep in mind here that you do have the ability at any point mid cooldown to start firing the weapon again if you haven't overheated it, which gives the weapon a ton of flexibility assuming you handle your engagements properly. More on that later. Wrapping up the weapon, we have a 0.5 times aiming down sights movement multiplier and a muzzle velocity of 540 meters per second. Pretty average for the LMG arsenal. Okay, so that right there is the little package that is the Beetlejuice. And well, straight out of the gate, guys, I want to get this question out of the way. Should you spend X amount of hours grinding out the directive to unlock this weapon? Yeah, just do it. I mean... As the weapon is currently designed, it is some of the most fun you can have if you're a player who can pace themselves with their engagements to work with the heat mechanic. And I do really want to highlight the width in that sentence, and here's why. The heat mechanic brings its own benefits that are unique to the mechanic. The fact that you can never really have to worry about ammo again, and the fact that you can, under the right timing, never really have to worry about downtime for that weapon. However, getting it wrong is costly, even more so than getting it wrong with the Orion. As we said before, if you overcook the weapon, you are stuck with approximately a 7.5 second cooldown. That's Gossor territory, but you only have half the magazine size by comparison. So to be clear, this is far from a choke point holding weapon. It demands that you set engagements on your terms and have control over the battlefield when you get into fights. This ain't no T9A Butcher with its 150 round magazine. So that's the first thing you really need to understand here with the Beetlejuice effectively. While yes, it passively reloads itself over time, you need to play by its rules to be its best of friends. Beyond that though, the weapon is really just another Orion. Take advantage of your accuracy to go for those headshots to really maximize your DPS, and the weapon will be a trusty companion in a lot of battle scenarios that you will find yourself facing. As your engagement ranges start to extend out a bit further, some burst firing is going to become a little bit more important, but not so much to the point where you find yourself tapping the trigger. As we said before, the weapon's first shot multiplier is brutal and throws things way out of whack if you stumble across it too often. If you find yourself having to tap fire like that, you need to switch weapons to be honest. Just yeah, be prepared to really aggressively pull down on the mouse when you're going for those longer bursts, because as we said before, that recoil at that rate of fire, it can be a bit arm breaking as time goes on. 
In all seriousness, guys, that's all I really have to say about the Beetlejuice overall from a stats and strategy perspective. It's a pretty, in my opinion, easy weapon to use, but that just might be me coming across from a new conglomerate background. Anyway, we can't do a video on this weapon without addressing the big old elephant in the room. Is the weapon actually overpowered? Hell, if you throw a Reddit or forum thread, or hell, a video in my case, putting this weapon in question, you will quickly spark one of the most heated debates around in the Planet Side 2 community. Some want this weapon to be nerfed into the ground, some want it to stay the way it is. And we've talked about this weapon a plenty on our Twitch stream. By the way, if you aren't following this already, twitch.tv forward slash kamikaze78, link in the description down below. And every time this weapon comes up, I lose control of my chat very quickly. So let me get this out there right here, right now. Do I think the Beetlejuice 54A is overpowered? Yes and no. Yeah, look, that didn't clear things up. Before the pitchforks start flying my way, allow me to explain my reasoning. The weapon from the perspective of raw DPS, accuracy, general handling, is not a weapon I consider overpowered. Yes, it is undeniably one of the most powerful weapons in CQC and can do some incredible work, but so can the T9 Carve, which is a weapon that features the exact same damage profile and rate of fire, and is built for CQC oriented engagements with a larger magazine size, which gives it the ability to hold choke points in a way that the Orion and Beetlejuice would only ever dream of doing. The Orion and the Beetlejuice from the perspective of 1v1 infantry versus infantry capabilities aren't exactly what I would call out of whack. I mean, hell, I've heard plenty of arguments in favour of the Orion over the Beetlejuice thanks to the Orion's ability to mount attachments that make it more controllable or flexible in different scenarios. And to that logic, I can agree that the Orion actually has some merit in some scenarios more so than the Beetlejuice. Within the more competitive Jaeger community in particular, I know that the Orion gets a lot more use thanks to that attachment flexibility. That said, part of me thinks that that comes down to the fact that a lot of the Jaeger accounts don't have many of the directive weapons completed, but still, I'm not willing to completely discount the Orion's advantages in more competitive aspects of Planet Side 2 gameplay. So where does the contention primarily sit surrounding the Beetlejuice? It's with the heat mechanic. The fact that the weapon can effectively avoid reloading altogether if the user can pace their engagements properly. And of course, the kinds of players who own the Beetlejuice are going to have an easier time pacing engagements and such, because well, they've been around long enough to Araxium 5 LMGs, this isn't their first rodeo. So the advantages of the Beetlejuice directly tie in to rewarding the average skill of the players that are going to be using said weapon. But there is again also a pretty hefty penalty of getting it wrong with a whopping 7.5-ish second reload time. Again, that's in the territory of, say, the Goss or with only half the rounds to play with. Which again, for me, justifies the weapon's unique heat properties up until a certain point. For me, we reach that point when we look at how the weapon dissipates its heat even while it's unequipped. This element, this part of the heat mechanic is my sole point of criticism for the Beetlejuice as it stands right now. And the reason for that is that there is no other weapon in the game right now that offers you a free reload while you have it unequipped with something else in your hands. Or hell, even while you're downed and waiting a revive. But right now, you can be firing away with your Beetlejuice and oh shit, a max suit comes charging around the corner. So you can pull out your launcher and give him the good old how do you do, switch to your sidearm to pick off his pocket engineer, slam a med kit for the road and for your addiction, and then your Beetlejuice is roaring and ready to go, no questions asked, no downtime required. There is not a single weapon in the game right now outside of the Beetlejuice where you can achieve the same kind of results, and that to me is where the issues lie. It creates a level of quote unquote uptime that can't be matched with any other build in the game, and in turn gives Vanu Sovereignty Heavy Assaults who know what they're doing an ability to keep pushing where others would have to take some downtime, and that is a faction locked ability with the Vanu Sovereignty and the Beetlejuice light machine gun. Sure, other factions have got weapons with larger magazine sizes, but eventually they still have to go through a locked period of downtime. That's the problem that we have here. 
So the only change I would like to see be made to the Beetlejuice is having its ability to cool down while holstered removed entirely, meaning it would have to be in your hands to be actively cooling down. It equalizes the element of downtime that needs to be taken between the factions and still keeps some unique elements available to the weapon and offers a unique playstyle to those who do unlock that Araxium reward weapon. But anyway guys, that brings us to the close of today's weapon review for the Beetlejuice 54A and a bit of a wider conversation surrounding its current balance in the game. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments section down below, but please guys, stay civil. We're all friends here. I mean, we're having a chat about a gun in a friggin' video game. Let's try and stay civil as best we can. I'm sure we can all do that. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to back in the like button, and if not, well, that other button works pretty well as well. And if you want to support the channel further, then consider joining our channel membership. Just for $1.49, it goes a long way in the content guys and you get all videos a day early unless it's a special time constricted video anyway guys as always i hope you enjoyed today's video peace out and i will see you guys all in the next one take care guys have a good one